Today, almost all Sifrei Torah are written on what we call klaf, which is translated as parchment. It is several of the layers of skin. As, as we know from biology that there are multiple layers of skin, both in the human being and in the animal. And when you process the hide, when you make a parchment out of it, of one kind or another, you can use different layers of, of skin, or all of the layers of the skin. Nowadays, we make, make a relatively thin parchment, in general, and that, that is called cloth. However, it used to be, and in fact, the Talmud says it's the best way of writing a Sefer Torah, to write on something called gavil. Gavil is you take the entire thickness of the animal hide, and you tan the entire thing. It's soft, much more like a leather jacket, rather than stiff, like the parchment that most people are used to today. It bends, as you can see, even this very old piece is still very flexible. So I would take a new piece, you could see it just, you can do anything you want with it. Um, and it lasts a very, very long time. When you tan the hide, there are, the back of the animal has a very rough hide to it. And it's almost impossible to write on. So we're always, the piece of parchment that we're using to write on is always from the belly of the animal because it's a soft, smooth piece. Because of the size of these pieces, which are relatively large, we can tell that, that this was coming most likely from a cow, unless they had huge sheep available, which is very unlikely at the time, because they would have probably slaughtered them to eat them long before that time. Because each animal is slightly different, they're not coming off an assembly line, each animal is exactly 54 centimeters wide and long and so on, that the whatever we have from the belly of the animal that's usable is going to be different for each animal. Now the height, we have to make sure, is the same throughout it. However, the width, we're going to cut based upon how much good usable parchment we have for that particular urea, for that particular pain. And therefore you're going to get, each, we want to use each piece as much as we can because Slaughtering animals was not a daily occurrence like it is for us. They used every piece that they could get. They needed to use as much of it as they could. So that each one of the columns, this column is about 30 centimeters wide, this panel is 30 centimeters wide, this one is about 35, maybe 38 centimeters wide. So the width, each one has three columns on it. So the width of these three columns is less, less than the width of these three columns. It's even interesting to note, by the way, that the first column here is narrower than the second two on the panel. They did it as, as they felt they could easily divide up the parchment. There may have been, in what became the margin in between the columns, um, blemishes that we can no longer see that would have made it difficult to write over those things. That's sometimes why they made the column width. Another thing that's interesting about this is if you look here, you will see in between every single column there's a fold. Mm -hmm. This is not true of all Sifrei Torah. That meant that at one point Someone used this Sefer Torah to write another Torah, and he folded it like that, so it could fit right next to what he was writing over here. And he would fold each column as he went to be able to write the next, next column of the Sefer that he was going to be writing. So at some point in time, this Sefer Torah was viewed as one of the better Sefer Torah in the community, that was authoritative enough to use it to copy another Sefer Torah. First, if you look at the Laman here, you'll see it is basically a straight line extending up. A Laman is described by the Talmud as a Chaf and a Vav. So the bottom part of the Laman, if you ignore the top, is shaped like a Chaf. Mm -hmm. and, and the top is supposed to be a Vav. However, they made a Vav simply as a line without what we put to get today on the Vav, or even they did on a, on a Vav, having it ahead to the Vav. If you look at, for instance, the Vav in the name of God here, you will note that there is a head put on the Vav, and that's the way a Vav is written today, and that's the way the Vav at the top of a Lamed is usually written, except by Sephardic Jewry in Western Europe. In North Africa, they put the head on the, the, head on the Vav on the, of the Lamed. In... Spain, Portugal, Provence, sometimes in Italy, they didn't. So that's telling you this Sefer Torah had to have come from Western Europe as opposed to North Africa, and 
there's a possibility that the, the sofa from those areas went someplace else and wrote it, and also that it was old, certainly before the expulsion from Spain. All right. If you look at the Yud, the Yud has three points to it. It has a tag, a crown on the upper left, a regal, a leg that loops down from the right, and here you have what's called an ukets the Rabbeinu Tam, a stem of Rabbeinu Tam. And if you look at most old Sephardi Sifre Torah outside the Spain-Portugal area, they will not have the ukets the Rabbeinu Tam. They'll be rounded as Rashi describes writing the Yud. In Spain and Portugal, they wrote with the ukets the Rabbeinu Tam always. So again, that's implying very strongly that this Sefer Torah was either written in Spain or Portugal, or that it was written by a Sofer that came from Spain and Portugal. Now, as we were talking earlier about this stretching letters mm -hmm. to fill in the line, there are different combinations of letters that can be lengthened. Today, Sofrim will tell you that either one or two sets of letters can be strengthened. Either the letters that spell the words Ohel Tam, Aleph He Lamed Tav Mem Sofit, or Ohel Drat, Aleph He Lamed Dalet Reish Tav. Those are the letters that can be extended to justify a margin. Now, going back more than 500 years, more than probably 600 years, it becomes much more common. You have the shin that's extended here and here, and many other places as well to justify margins. You will also have nuns that are extended or extended under a yud that follows them. Hold on, and I'll try and find one. Avanim here, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a base here that's extended a chaf here that's expended, a chaf here that's extended under a yud. It seems very common in this sefer that not only the nun, which is common throughout um, very old, older than five, six hundred year old Sifrei Torah from Sephardim to have a nun extended, but to have other letters extended is showing even greater age. The Talmud says that if you forget a word, you're tole ben shite. You hang the word between the lines. So, v'techel kol avoda mishkan ohel moed. The sofer forgot the word mishkan, so he hang, hung it between the lines. What's in, the fact that they did that, they did that until 250, 300 years ago is very common. But normally, at the end of avodot, avodat, you would begin the mem of mishkan. Here he's put it almost as we would do in writing with a check pointing up and placed it between the two words. That's something that only happens in very, very old Sifrei Torah. Or where the Sofer didn't know what he was doing. Here the Sofer did know what he was doing. We know from looking at other things that the Sofer was an expert. However, here it seems that this is what was common at that time. This is what the accepted practice at that time, even though by 500 years ago, that wouldn't have been accepted to, to hang, the let, hang the word between the lines in that way. To what we saw at the end of Sefer Bereshit, where he finished out the line, as all of our Sefer Torah are written today, here he came to the end of the Sefer in the middle of the line. He wasn't concerned at all to finish the line. He just ended where he was. That is a very, very old phenomenon, meaning you will not see that in a Sefer Torah that's younger than 700 years old. So that's absolute evidence that this Sefer Torah was written 700 plus years ago.